Hello, a warm welcome to all from SGT University. I am Dr. Bhupinder Yadav from Faculty of Dental Sciences and today we are going to learn about posterior teeth arrangement. Before starting with your posterior teeth arrangement, you have to ensure that following markings are marked on your mandibular cast. First is the retromolar pad area, which should be divided into three parts and the upper third of the retromolar pad line should be extended onto the land area of the cast. Also the center of the ridge, which should be extended on the cast. The plane of occlusion of teeth arrangement should not be above the two third of the retromolar pad area. The maxillary lingual or the palatal cusp should be centralized over the midline. Or the central fossa of the mandibular teeth should be on the center of the ridge and in a straight line. It ensures denture stability and reduces the fulcruming force during function. No artificial teeth should be arranged over the retromolar pad area as it is placed at an angle or an inclined plane and also it is primarily made up of soft tissue which will displace the denture during function. When we place the central fossa of artificial teeth on the midline, it places them on the center of the ridge. So all the masticatory forces are directed vertically onto the center of the ridge and also the teeth are placed in a neutral zone. Neutral zone is an area where the forces of the tongue are balanced by the forces of the cheek musculature. So if the teeth are arranged in neutral zone, they will resist the displacing forces much better than if the teeth are arranged buccally or lingually. Basically, there are three types of artificial posterior teeth. First is anatomic teeth, semi-anatomic teeth and non-anatomic teeth. Anatomic teeth have cuspal angle of 33 degrees, similar to that of natural teeth. They are used for patients with aesthetic concern, coordinated jaw movements, good ridges and relatively young patients. Semi-anatomic teeth have a shallow cuspal angle of around 15 to 20 degrees. Non-anatomic teeth have 0 degree cuspal angle and they are used in patients who have severely resolved ridge, jaw size discrepancies such as class 3 patient, uncoordinated jaw movements or patients with poor neuromuscular control. After finishing the arrangement of maxillary and mandibular anterior teeth, we start with the maxillary first premolar. The central fossa of the first premolar is in a straight line and the long axis is parallel to the vertical when viewed from the front and the side. In horizontal glass slab relation, the buccal cusp touches the glass slab whereas the palatal cusp is 0.5 mm above the glass slab. Maxillary second premolar is arranged almost similar to the first premolar that is the long axis of the tooth is parallel to the vertical when viewed from the front and the side. Central force of the premolar is in a straight line and the only difference is that, that both the buccal and the palatal cusp are touching the glass slab. After arranging second premolar we start with the maxillary first molar. The long axis of the tooth is inclined distally and buccally and only the mesiopalatal cusp is in contact with the occlusal plane. The long axis of the maxillary second molar slopes buccally more steeply than the first molar when viewed from the front and it is distally more steeply when viewed from the side. All the four cusps of the maxillary second molar are clear of the occlusal plane but the mesiopalatal cusp is nearest to it. The occlusal fossa of all the maxillary posterior teeth are in a straight line. Whereas in the lateral glass plate relation, the buccal surface of the canine, premolars and the mesobuccal cusp of the first molar should touch the glass plate 
whereas the distobuckle cusp of this first molar and the second molar should not touch it. Still, there should be no gap between the arranged posterior teeth and the mandibular rim and the incisal rod should be touching the incisal teeth. The contralateral maxillary and mandibular occlusal rim should be in close contact. Similarly, the opposite side maxillary posterior teeth are also arranged keeping in mind the horizontal and the lateral cross lip relation and also when you close the articulator the incisal rod should be touching the incisal table and there should be no gap between the arranged maxillary posterior teeth and the mandibular at this stage we will again confirm the horizontal glass slab relation of all the maxillary teeth and will remove any discrepancies if found for maxillary central incisor, the incisal edge is touching the glass slab. For lateral incisor, the incisal edge is 0.5 to 1 mm above the glass slab. For canine, only the cusp tip is touching. For maxillary first premolar, only the buccal cusp are touching the glass slab. For maxillary second premolar, both the buccal and palatal cusp are touching. For maxillary first molar, only the mesopalatal cusp is touching, whereas for the maxillary second molar, there is no cusp touching the glass slab. After completing the maxillary posterior teeth, we start with the mandibular posterior teeth. First, we have to arrange the mandibular first molar. Mark the approximate position of the first molar on the mandibular occlusal rim and melt the wax from the marked region. Then put some wax on the occlusal surface of the maxillary molar and stick the mandibular molar by placing the mesiobuccal cusp in the embrasure between the maxillary second premolar and the maxillary first molar. Then gently close the articulator and you will observe that the mandibular molar has been placed in the correct position and open it carefully. You have to arrange the mandibular molar in a class 1 molar relationship which is the mesiobuccal cusp of the maxillary first molar should align with the mesiobuccal groove of the mandibular first molar. Similarly, you arrange the mandibular second molar. First remove the wax in the second molar region then place the second molar between the embrasure of first and second molar and close the articulator gently and place the teeth in the desired position. The long axis of the tooth slopes slightly lingually when viewed from the front and both the cusp are 2 mm above the level of the occlusal plane. Then in similar fashion we arrange the mandibular second and the first premolar. The second premolar lies in the embrasure of the maxillary first and the second premolar. The long axis is parallel to the vertical plane. Its cusp are about 2 mm above the occlusal plane and the central fossa lie over the crest of the ridge. Whereas the first premolar lie in the embrasure between the canine and the maxillary first premolar. The buccal cusp of the mandibular first premolar should engage the mesial marginal ridge of the maxillary first premolar and the lingual cusp is below the occlusal plane while the buccal cusp is 2 mm above the occlusal plane. After arrangement of mandibular first premolar, you will finish off the arrangement of posterior teeth of one side and you have to check for the following points. There should be no gap between the opposite side mandibular rim and the maxillary posterior and the incisal rod is touching the incisal table. Central fossa of all mandibular teeth are in a straight line over the crest of the ridge and should not lie above the two-third of the retromolar pad area. Similarly, we arrange the mandibular posterior teeth on the contralateral side, keeping in mind the principles discussed before in the video. After arranging all the maxillary and mandibular teeth comes the very important part, that is finishing, polishing and wax. First, you have to properly seal all your artificial teeth to the denture base where you think wax is deficient, you have to add it. Then with the help of a lacron cover, you remove the excess wax from the surface of the denture base and do the gingival carving of all the teeth. 
In the process, remove all the wax from the labial, palatal, occlusal and lingual surface of the artificial teeth. Then take a working blow torch and blow the flame on teeth surfaces on both labial, palatal and lingual side gently without burning them. Then dip the denture base into cold water in a bowl and wipe the surface with moist cotton and you will observe a shining surface on your teeth arrangement. Similarly finish your mandibular teeth arrangement following the same principles of finishing polishing and wax up. The finished and polished maxillary and mandibular denture base with teeth setting are placed on the articulator and you should observe for any wax on the facial, lingual and the occlusal surface of the artificial teeth. Also look for any air bubbles on the wax part of the finished setup. Finally before submitting your teeth setting, you should recheck for the following points in your setup. First is check for the anterior overbite and overjet and look for any type of crowding or rotation in the anterior region while you are busy arranging your posterior teeth. The central fossa of all maxillary posterior should be in a straight line on both sides. Same applies for the mandibular posterior teeth which should lie on the crest of the ridge. The incisal rod should be touching the incisal table and the incisal pin should be in the right position. Finally check for the glass lab relation of the maxillary posterior teeth and also check for the occlusion level of the mandible posterior teeth. You are always confused that whether the tooth is of right side or left side. So now I will tell you about how to differentiate between right and left side artificial teeth. Maxillary central incisor is the first tooth which you arrange in your teeth setting. The central incisors can be distinguished on the basis of their incisal edges. The mesial incisal edge of central incisor is less rounded or sharper than the distal incisal edge. Maxillary lateral incisor is the smallest of all the maxillary teeth. The right and left maxillary lateral incisor can be distinguished on the basis of the mesial and distal surfaces. The mesial surface is longer than the distal surface. Also, the incisal edge of the mesial side is more sharper than the distal side. Maxillary canine is also called as the personality tooth. The neck is the most prominent part and the incisal surface is divided into two halves that is the mesial and the distal half. Right and left side maxillary canine can be distinguished on the basis of the incisal surface. The mesial half of the incisal surface is shorter than the distal half of the incisal surface of the maxillary canine. Mandibular central and lateral incisor are almost similar in size and shape. The only mild difference is that the mesodistal width of the lateral incisor is slightly more than that of the mandibular central incisor. Now coming to the mandibular canine. Mandibular canine can be distinguished on the basis of the incisal surface. Incisal surface is divided into two halves, mesial half and the distal half and the mesial half is shorter than the distal half. Mandibular first molar has five cusp, three buccal and two lingual. The distobuccal cusp of the mandibular molar is the smallest and you can differentiate between right and left side mandibular first molar by observing the distobuccal cusp which should lie on the distal side. The only difference between the mandibular first and second molar is of the size of the occlusal surface. Mandibular second molar is smaller than the mandibular first molar. Maxillary first molar is the largest tooth in the maxillary arch. It can be identified by rhomboidal occlusal outline 
and the presence of an oblique ridge between the mesiopalatine and the distobuccal cusp. Right and left maxillary first molar can be identified by observing the mesiopalatal cusp which is the largest or the distopalatal cusp which is the smallest. Mandibular and maxillary molar can be distinguished on the basis of the anatomy of the occluded surface. Mandibular molar has five prominent cusp that is three buccal and two lingual whereas maxillary molar has four prominent cusp with the mesiopalatal cusp being the largest. Finally your hard work will pay off and you will be able to do a beautiful teeth arrangement. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, see you next time.